Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Another beautiful day of spring out here in the Carpathians. This morning it was only minus one, but we are expecting minus eight again next week. Stay tuned. First of all, let me uh, point out to the fencing channel. And All Stars Italian foil. Many people wish to change their life. They want to move from a city to the country. They want to be their own boss. They want independence. And they say this, but then they say they can't. They would like to, but they can't. So what we're going to talk about today is how you actually do it. But you must always remember that money is not the goal. Money is a means to an end. First, you must have your aim, your target, and then you need to know what you require to achieve this. If it requires money, then you work out how to get money. If you're happy in your career, good for you. If you're not, Maybe you're looking at money the wrong way. There's nothing as fulfilling as doing a job you love day after day. It's one of the ideal situations where you get up in the morning and you really want to do your job or run your business. That's ideal. But for many, this doesn't happen. Work is just a grind. And you quickly get into debt and you're just working to pay off numerous debts. About 15 years ago, a book came out on the market which became an instant overnight bestseller. And it was called The Secret and it was written by a woman called Rhonda Byrne. But what she exploited, to use a suitable term, was what is known in the occult as will or even intent. As Alistair once said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And this is from uh, I think Francois Rabelais who originally said, face ce que tu voudras. It was also used by the Hellfire Club. Do what thou wilt. And what this means is you focus your willpower, your complete intent on what you want. And you do it. That is how you achieve everything. For the naysayers who say that doesn't work, it does. When you meditate, when you sit, when you chant, you focus on what you want. And you basically change how you live your life, so that is the end goal. When I was looking into filmmaking, I was really shocked by the sacrifices the director writers make to get that film out there. Quite often they will mortgage their home or max out their credit cards to pay for the film to be made. But it's the fact that they use their will to achieve their goal. So, intent. Now, focused intent is usually seen as positive intent. Where you want something positive for your life, so you focus on it, and it manifests. One very unusual style of manifestation is something called a tulpa, which is an entity or a being which comes into being because a group of people imagines it. But 
this is a bit off track. I'm talking more concrete reality. You have positive manifestations and negative manifestations. And believe me, it's much, much easier to create a negative manifestation than a positive one. And the reason is, it's actually quite hard to continuously focus positively on what you're aiming at. Negative, it's very, very easy. And the emotions you use, because it is emotions that actually create the manifestation, the emotions you use for negative are much stronger. Sadness, fear, worry. These are really, really strong emotions. Let's take, for example, of an evening, you have to walk home on your own. And it's dark, and you have to walk through the city. And every time you do this, you're afraid. And basically what you're doing is reinforcing this fear in your mind again and again and again. You're frightened someone is going to step out of the shadows and rob you. By continuously focusing on this fear, what you're doing is telling the universe, our little holographic simulation of a reality, to install this. And at some point, it will probably happen because you have focused so greatly on it. If any of you are into uh, quantum physics and the appearance and disappearance of particles merely by concentrating on them, this is it. If you focus on something, it will happen. You just have to be really careful not to negatively focus on it. This goes beyond synchronicity. This is almost like you're rewriting the program, which in fact you are. So, you want to change your life. You want to leave the city, move to the country. You want to change your job. It's all about will and intent. How far you go with that is up to you. How far your ethics and morals go is up to you. But I do believe we pay a price. Always try to do everything, as the Wiccans would say, and harm none. Because there's karma involved. Obviously the California star karma rather than the original concept of it. But there is karma involved. For those of you cool. For those of you who would like to explore this more deeply, there was a book written about a hundred years ago, and it is called the Kybalion, or the Three Initiates. And this deals with it in great detail how to use willpower for positive manifestation, how to use directed positive intent. Now, I would like to give an example of how one of my positive focuses backfired on me. This is all part of this 10 thing bucket list, which I speak often about. You set yourself 10 goals and you do them. This is all part of this. But sometimes they don't turn out how you want. Yes, you achieve them, but it's not quite what you imagined. It's almost like the gods are having a laugh. One of the things I had on my newest bucket list was a new motorcycle. I love Scarlett, but she's a 650 single cylinder and I need something with a bit more oomph. I also don't like the fact she has plastic furring. I want a more naked bike so I can access parts more easily. And one bike I really, really like is the BMW 
R90 scrambler. And what I said to myself, it's act, for me, it's very, very expensive. I think they start at about 13, 14,000 euros and go up. But for me, that's a lot of money for a bike. So what I decided, I'd aim for this bike and I'd keep it for the rest of my life. I'd customize it and this will do me till retirement. That was my goal. I set my focus and by focus I mean every day I repeat to myself the image of me riding. Not the words, but you see yourself sitting on that motorbike riding through the country. You see yourself sitting with people looking at your motorbike. You have to basically create the image into existence. You want to live in the country, don't have it as a random thought, as an abstract thought. Picture yourself in the exact house you want to live in. Picture yourself going for walks of an evening, surrounded by trees and birds and squirrels. It has to be a concrete thought. You need to apply emotions to it, where you feel happy, you feel sad. All the emotions of it already being in existence. That is the secret to will and intent. It's as though it's already happened. And then the universe will suddenly think, oh, I overlooked that, I'll put it in. That is what you need to do. Anyway, I did this with this motorbike every day. I'd spend some time picturing myself, you know, cleaning it, riding it, being very, very happy with it. After a couple of weeks of doing this, I was traveling to uh, the city of Krushitsa in the south, and I stopped at a gas station, a petrol station. And I went in, and there, sitting on the counter, was on special offer, A 1 18th scale version of the motorbike. It doesn't even say the name of the bike on the box. It just says special edition. That is a BMW R9 T Scrambler. My dream bike that I had applied so much focus and intent and meditation on. And at this point, I had to make a choice. Do I buy it or not? And it seems a simple one. I bought it. And that basically was the end of my focused intent and will on buying a BMW R90 Scrambler. I had bought one, not the one I'd originally wanted, something about that big, which I can actually ride, but something or someone somewhere had said, just buy that. For whatever reason, maybe for the lulls, or maybe out of concern, just buy that one and be happy. Sometimes the universe, the gods, whoever, they look out for you and they say, just maybe that's not what you should be focusing on. Take this and be happy. So I bought it. It sits on one of my shelves and I look at it occasionally and just grin. There is a border between what used to be called esoterica or the occult and what in modern terms we call quantum physics or holographic reality. The more science explores the more we're seeing they're very very similar. We just didn't understand how the universe worked. Your top 10 bucket list make your top 10 bucket list 
but choose very carefully what you want on it. Don't put stuff on it because you think it will be cool or others will be impressed. It's got to be something you deeply, deeply feel inside because you're going to be living with it in whatever form it manifests as. Anyway, please subscribe to my channel, watch my videos and like them. And as always, be free.